Reading with your kids. Hola, ni hao, konnichiwa, assalamu alaikum, shalom, jambo, bienvenidos. Hi, my name is Jed Lee and this is the Reading with Your Kids podcast. We are coming to you from the beautiful neighborhood of Reedville in the southwest corner of Boston, Massachusetts. Please be sure to subscribe to the show on the iHeartRadio app, on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Ghana, and wherever you find your podcast. Our guest today is Anne Gonzalez. She is here to celebrate her beautiful book, Beloved and the Pepper Tree. Before we invite Anne into the studio, we want to let you know we have a brand new Reading With Your Kids certified great read to celebrate. That's right. Bradley's Dragon by Patrick Matthews is our latest Reading With Your Kids certified great read. This book is seriously awesome. Five stars all the way around. In fact, our, our panel said that they would give it seven if they were able to. It really is a wonderful book. So many of the folks on our panel said they, they, they couldn't put it down. They love the characters. A great plot line. It, it, it was deep, and they were really able to get into it. It's a middle grade read, so it's not a picture book. It, it, it's wonderful. I, like I said before, the, the, folks, the folks in our panel absolutely loved Bradley's Dragon. You can read our full review at our website, readingwithyourkids.com. But we want to give a big shout out, a big congratulations to Patrick Patrick Matthews. His book, Bradley's Dragon, is our latest Reading With Your Kids certified great read. Join us right now from Southern California. She is the author of a beautiful new picture book called Beloved and the Pepper Tree. Please welcome to the show, Ann Gonzalez. Ann, how are you? I'm well. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, we're really happy that you're here on the show. I, I can't wait for you to tell our audience all about Beloved and the Pepper Tree. Well, I think it's a book they will love knowing about. Um She's very special, and I always refer to her to the book as her because Beloved is such a character in my life. I feel like she has been a presence ever since she was she came to be. It's it's interesting. You're not the first uh, author who's referred to their book as a, a, an an entity and and as a uh, a, a, a living being that that is growing and and I, you know I, I i suppose that that's very appropriate because books do grow and they adapt and they change um can you talk a little bit more about that relationship that you have with beloved well she came into my life in india i was on a, a retreat and i was staying in an ashram and doing some meditation and I happened to celebrate my birthday while I was there, and a holy man gave me a blessing, and they said, well, my friend said, be sure to tell him that um, it's your birthday. So I did, and I was given a little, little piece of cloth that was wrapped up, and it had a significant meaning. Um, but the next morning, I put it under my pillow, and the next morning I woke up, sat straight up in bed, grabbed a journal and a pen, and the story just came out of me. It was a very odd experience. I, I wasn't a writer. I, I mean, I like writing for business, but I, I've never written any fiction at all. And um, the story came out completely intact, and I walked into a meeting later that morning, and I said, well, I just had this darndest experience. I think I wrote a children's story. And they said, oh, you've had a download. And I asked, what, what is a download? I don't know what that is. And they said, well, it's when something sort of channels through you versus you laboring over it and spending time writing it. And... That's exactly my experience, and this story, I believe, was a gift to me, part, partly because of my birthday, I think, and, and partly to help me grow and change in ways that I did not foresee, but 
I refer to Beloved as she because she's taken me on such a journey, and it's just been so special. Interesting. Now, you mentioned that, that Beloved has helped you grow, and we're all the time we're reminding listeners that, you know, children's books, pictures book, books, they're not just for kids. There, there are a lot of great messages, a lot of great lessons that everybody can take away from, from, from picture books. How, if, if you don't mind telling us, how did Beloved help you grow? Oh, I, I don't mind at all. She, um, well, first of all, I, I never had any knowledge of publishing, of book writing, of the process. So in um, wanting to birth her sort of into the world, I, I got familiar with all of that. And then going through the editing process and the, uh, you know, the illustration process, I learned to have much more of a voice. I was probably more reluctant to really state my opinion firmly before this experience, but in wanting to bring her to life exactly how I envisioned her, I got pretty tough on what needed to be in the book, what needed, what, you know, needed to stay in the book, what could be let go of, what the pictures needed to look like. I turned down a, a lot of illustrators before the, I finally um, was connected with an illustrator who lived in Barcelona. Her name is Manu Montoya, and she she added so much to the story. She just understood Beloved. She understood the style I wanted and her illustrations. She she expresses Beloved's childlike qualities so well to me. Um, and there were funny funny things that she added that I wouldn't have thought of. Neat. So we, 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 we've we learned of the story of how Beloved came to be and, and, and how it helped you grow. Can you tell us the story that we'll be reading with our kids when we pick up Beloved? Sure. So Beloved is the story of a little girl and her friendship with a tree. And she just adores this tree that lives down the hill from her. And she plays under the tree. She climbs up on it and she uses it as a, as a stage and she sings to the world and um, but one day her mother tells her that they're moving. So she asks, well, how are we going to move the tree? And ma- the mother says, well, we can't. We, you, you know, we need to leave. And Beloved's just heartbroken. And she goes down to the tree and she asks, how, how am I going to leave you? And the, the tree tells her, you know, when we, when we have a new experience or when we move to a new place, we grow in ways that we could never imagine, and she likens it to a tree growing in a clay pot. And the tree can grow in a clay pot, and it, it will live, but it won't flourish in a pot. It won't grow big, its branches won't fan out, and its leaves won't reach for the sun, and... So she says, don't, but don't worry about that right now. When it's time to move, you come back here and, and bring a satchel with you. So the moving day arrives, and again, Beloved visits her tree, and the tree begins to rain little seeds down for Beloved to carry to her new place. And in the, in the final page, we see her planting new, new seeds with, with new friends. So she's now made a bunch of friends, which she didn't have before. And and you see that all is well and that the tree is going to live on. That's beautiful. Now, you, you explained to us early on that this story was downloaded to you kind of as, as a gift as you're meditating in an ashram in India. Are there elements mm-hmm. of, of your life in the story? There are. One, when I was a little girl, I had a pepper tree that was down the hill from my house, and we did move from that house, and I remember being very sad when I left 
that house and that tree. You know, it, it's funny because we moved to an avocado orchard. There were plenty of trees there, but there was never a special tree to me like this one particular little pepper tree that I remember. And it, I recently asked my sister about it, and she said, I don't remember a pepper tree, but I, I clearly have this memory of this tree being there. Um, and, I, I, you know, it, it's not something that I've thought about a whole lot until the book came to be, and then I thought, well, that there is that element that's absolutely true for me. Another thing that had happened in India um at this ashram that, that we visited, there were signs along a meditation path, and some were in various languages and some were in English. And one of them said, just, um, let me think if I can get this right, just as uh, butter is hidden within milk, and the entirety of a tree is hidden in a seed, so is the divine planted in the human heart. And it just struck me. I thought it was so beautiful, and the idea of an entire tree already being within a seed really, really resonated with me. And I, I, and I wrote it down. I don't know that I gave it a lot of thought after that, but I believe I believe it planted a seed in me for sure. Wow, that's a that's a, a, a powerful image. I imagine um, I imagine just sitting down with with our kids in 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 holding a seed and 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 helping them think about the fact that this giant tree potentially is is living in is be inside this little seed I, I i can imagine it could you know a family could sit and contemplate contemplate that for for hours well and you just gave me a, a great uh image also the idea of sitting down with a child and a seed and i i think that that's a wonderful way of explaining how it works and how how the seed will become a tree yeah. you sitting down and, and, and speaking with kids that's you know one of the things that we are all about here at the reading with your kids podcast is inspiring families to sit down and and, 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 and to rest and relax and take that time to be together with our kids and reading no matter what their age is what kind of conversations do you think families can have if they choose to take that time to be still and to read Beloved in the Pepper Tree together? One thing that I hope they discuss is the idea that we're always growing and changing mm -hmm. and that resistance is a normal part of life, no matter if we're five years old or 50 years old and everything in between and beyond, it changes maybe a little scary and it's also exciting and resistance happens. And yet if we push through, we can discover things that we never knew we needed to know or wanted to know. We develop new character traits perhaps that, you know, it's just it, it seems that change is just so good for us. And the other thing I really hope that children hear from their parents is that, and I, I don't know if you want to call it the universe or spirit or Mother Nature or God, but something's got our back. I, I, I believe something something is just there to to really help us and make it okay and. Just like the tree gives beloved the seeds, I believe we're constantly being given seeds that can take root if we're willing to move forward. Interesting. You know, a thought just occurred to me, and this this might be an unfair question. It might be a question that you're not able to to answer, but. One of the things you just said is that I, I, I hope when families are reading this together that a parent can tell a child this. What do you think 
a child might be inspired to tell their parent while they're reading this book together? That's a wonderful question. You know, I'm, I'm in a time of life where my children are grown and I don't have grandchildren yet. So I've only had a few experiences of actually getting to sit down with children and read the story. Um, I love their questions. I love um, that one child asked, did you grow from a seed? And I was a little thrown by that because not the seed that you plant in the ground, but there's similarities. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that was that was a good one. Um, I think that they can really relate to her emotions. When she finds out that she's moving away, she runs down the hill and she's crying. And I I think it's a very real moment that I've seen kids really relate to. And frankly, parents relate to it, too. I know most of my adult family members have said, I cried when I read the book. Um, because we've all had that experience of having to, to move or to leave something that we dearly treasured. Um, so my experience with the readings is that the, the children will ask or say, is she sad? You know, is, is she, is she going to be okay? And another hope that I have is that parents will talk about how emotions are real mm -hmm. and they change. They're constantly changing and emotions are okay. It's okay to be sad. It's nothing we have to run away from. Um, but in the end, it all worked out. It all works out. Yeah. Now, one of the things I read about you is that you're an expressive arts facilitator. Can you talk a little bit about what that is and how you help people? Yes. So I became an expressive arts facilitator in 2015 after doing some schooling to become a counselor, but I was doing my own painting for quite a few years, and I, I really wanted to discover a way to marry my love of creating art with my interest in counseling. And I discovered a program in Orange County um, that, is called Art and Creativity for Healing, and I went through their program, and it it teaches to, it teaches us how to use art materials to express our emotions when language isn't serving us. What I mean by that is sometimes, and particularly people with trauma, the feelings are there, but their words aren't aren't able to tell what's going on with them. But when we engage in the art-making process, it uses a different part of the brain. And imagery, which is perhaps one of the first languages that we, we start to learn, we'll use images and color and form and the strength of lines to express what's going on with us. And um, so this program helps helps us to learn to use uh, art materials in an expressive way, and that's what it means to, to express ourselves. So there's no need to be an artist. That's not even a word I love necessarily when it – when when referring to expressive arts, um, it's simply using materials to express ourselves. Um, and I've referred a lot to paints and visual arts, but in 2019, I became a certified expressive arts facilitator. And 
have learned to use other materials as well, such as song and movement and writing and even some sand play and uh, some mandala work. All of those are, are other ways of accessing ourselves internally and expressing what's going on with us without necessarily having to use language, except the writing. Yeah. You know, it's true. I think the emotions, especially, for, well, I was going to say especially for kids, but I know a lot of adults who still struggle with expressing their emotions. <laughs> And I think the more tools that we can that we can give our kids and 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 adults to use to express their emotions and understand their emotions, the better. Um, so um, I, it's exciting that you're part of that work. What drew you to that? My own difficulty with expressing myself with language. Mm -hmm. I, <laughs> you know, I feel like I'm someone who who really really struggled for a long time, particularly in my youth, and and it's gotten a lot better, but it was it was my own struggle, I think, that brought me to painting and then helped me to recognize this as such an important way of communicating that gets overlooked. And, you know, you mentioned the children, when I watch kids sit down to create a piece of art, they have no fear. It's very natural. It's very intuitive for them to just sit down and start drawing or painting. But what happens for us at some point usually is that somebody makes a judgment or a critique of our work that gives us an impression of ourselves of whether we are, quote, unquote, an artist or not or artistic or not. Maybe it's a teacher holding up another kid's artwork and saying, this is a beautiful bunny or whatever. And and then another child might compare their work to the star student's work and think, well, then I'm not artistic like so-and-so. Or it might be within the family. Um, somebody is the artistic one and another kid might be the you know, social one or whatever, but we start labeling. And it's unfortunate because one of the first hurdles that we need to get over in expressive arts or any kind of healing art program is helping people get past that vision of themselves as artistic or not artistic hopefully so that they can put aside those ideas and simply use the materials available to allow imagery to speak. Mm, fascinating. Tell me, uh, I, now I know you, you explained in the story that this, that, that Beloved in the Pepper Tree just kind of came to you. It was downloaded to you as a gift on your birthday. Um, mm -hmm. is, it, is it one and done for you or are there more children's books in your life? There are more. I had a similar experience about six months ago as I've, as I've been working with Beloved a little more and promoting her, doing marketing. I had started thinking, what would another book look like? Where would she be? What would, what would be going on for her? And more importantly, what, what messages would she want to tell other children? And I did have another experience of this coming up and sitting and writing very quickly a story. I have not started the publication process with her yet. And I'm not even sure I can tell you the reason other than I know I'll know when it's time. Mm -hmm. But right now... Uh, beloved's first book is is getting to have its moment. Well, we are excited that we're able to be a little bit of uh, be a little bit a part of Beloved's moment. Are are there ways for folks to connect with you on social media? Absolutely, um, Beloved and the Pepper Tree is uh, available on my website, um, which is www.angonzalesart.com. It, you can find her on Facebook. 
Instagram, and Pinterest. And I also um, would love to let people know that we have just started Beloved's Neighborhood Club. So when you go to my website, which is angonzalesart.com, you can click on Join Beloved's Neighborhood Club, and you'll be directed to join. And there, it's, it's brand new. There are uh, going to be activities and contests and things for children to do based on Beloved. Um, also, the website has our other pro- uh, pro- products <laughs> on it. Um, we've created a puzzle, and Beloved has a deck of wisdom cards, which are similar to oracle cards that you might know of. Some people use them to sort of give them guidance, perhaps, and it's a set of cards for children using the characters in Beloved to introduce them to the idea of having an affirmation to say throughout the day, and uh, for parents, it gives kids an activity to do in the day that's related to the theme, so that might be one less thing a parent needs to think about that day. Um, There's lots of ways to use them. Well, we have had a great time speaking to the author of Beloved in the Pepper Tree, Anne Gonzalez. Anne, thanks so much for being with us today. Thank you so much for having me. Please be sure to join us for the next edition of the Reading with Your Kids podcast. Our guest will be Josh Shipp. He's the author of No Matter What, A Foster Care Tale. This is a really, really powerful interview. You do not want to miss it. Josh was a foster kid, and uh, he really opens up about his experience and about the love that saved him. That's the next edition of the Reading With Your Kids podcast. If you were paying attention at the beginning of the podcast, we told you that Patrick Matthews, brand new book, Bradley's Dragon, is our latest Reading With Your Kids certified great read. If you're the author of a great children's book, you may want to check out our Certified Great Read program. It is a a, a wonderful seal of approval program. Uh, If our panel, uh, which is made up of uh, educators, kids, parents, if they believe that your book is worthy of four or five out of five stars, it becomes a Certified Great Read. And with that status comes a whole lot of fantastic tools that can really help your book stand out from the crowd of books that are published every single month. Go to our website, please, readingwithyourkids.com. Click on the Author Services button at the top of the page, and you'll find out all about this wonderful program. I want to thank the folks who made today's show so wonderful. Of course, I want to thank our guest, Ann Gonzalez. Please be sure to check out Beloved and the Pepper Tree. I also want to thank my incredible team, starting with my incredible producer, Fatima Khan. My awesome author, Ambassador Peggy Cotto. I want to thank my amazing daughter, Alejandra. I also want to thank my beautiful wife for all the support she gives me. Oh, we, we can't forget about Augie. He's giving us, giving, keeping security here in the studio. But most of all, we want to thank you. Thank you so much for taking time to be with us today. But most of all, thank you so very much for taking time to make the world a better place by reading with your kids. I'll be looking for you in the next edition of the Reading With Your Kids podcast. <laughs>